friends, it is so very good to be with you today. Uh, Glenn, Jeanette and Stephen, it must have felt like forever um, you're here. This is the day the Lord has made. And here's the most amazing thing. He holds all things within his hand. He has brought you to this place for the anointing you are about to receive. He is about to ordain you as a deacon in the church of God. And this means once a deacon, always a deacon. You're being ordained even after the order of Melchizedek. I am so excited to be here with you and uh, rejoice and praise God for this day. Um, it's been a strange time. Many of you here have uh, walked so closely with these ordinance whom you love, whom you have encouraged, whom you've had to, I would imagine, from time to time saying, get up and press on. Thank you so much for those words of encouragement and for your prayers and for all that you mean to these ordinance. And I know that your presence here is precious to every single one of them. Thank you. These have been strange times, first license as a, a lay curate. And you have learned over these last months, and we've spoken, and I know this is so, and I've also spoken to others. You have been learning what it means to be adaptable and agile according to the context you find yourself in, in order to come back to the very heart of the ministry you and I are called to, and that is to proclaim the love, the mercy of Jesus Christ. Jesus comes to reconcile the world to himself. And this is the ministry we have a, a, a share in because of his generosity and his calling. So, um, so without any further ado, as I praise God and give thanks to you, Let's turn to our order of service, to page six. Page six. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, and There is one body and one spirit. There is one to Peace be with you. Please do be seated. Friends, today has been made possible not only by your, your yes, but through the um, incredible logistical planning and the commitment and the service uh, and hospitality of the cathedral. Um, Dean Sue, please receive our deepest thanks. Uh, to you and to all the chapter and the staff for enabling this to happen. It's been an extraordinary um, weekend of ordination services. I would also like to um, thank Simon and the vocations team for having brought you this far. I know uh, the two of you, uh, or the three of you, owe so much, especially to the two of you, to you and Debbie. And I am so grateful to you for your engagement in these people's lives, for discerning the spirit at work and enabling, enabling them to come to this place. And I know that you are both very proud. I want to also thank Canon Leah. Um, Leah and I go back quite some time. Leah is a friend of mine. And so it's been an immense pleasure to be working with you. Uh, and the word I'm hearing from the ordinance is that the retreat has been brilliant under very difficult circumstances. Uh, you've completely pulled this out of the bag. Thank you so much for your experience, your wisdom, your knowledge, uh, and your perceptitude uh, in, in all that you've brought to this ordination. God calls his people to follow Christ and forms us into a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to declare the wonderful deeds of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
The church is the body of Christ, the people of God, and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the whole church is summoned to witness to God's love and to work for the coming of the kingdom. To serve this royal priesthood, God has given a variety of ministries. Deacons are ordained so that the people of God may be better equipped to make Christ known. Theirs is a life of visible self-giving. Christ is the pattern of their calling and their commission. As he washed the feet of his disciples, so must they wash the feet of others. Would the ordinance please stand? Bishop Beverly, I present Stephen Bridge to be ordained to the office of deacon in the Church of God. He is to serve in the St. Helens Town Centre team. Bishop Beverly, I present Jeanette Griffiths to be ordained to the office of deacon in the Church of God. She is to serve in the parish of Holy Trinity Wavertree. And Bishop Beverly, I present Glenn Gardner to be ordained to the office of deacon in the Church of God. She is to serve in the parishes of St. Thomas Lydiot and St. Cuthbert's household. Thank you. Archdeacon, for your presentation. Have those whose duty it is to know these ordinances and examine them, found them to be of godly life and sound learning? They have. Do they, be do they believe them to be duly called to serve God in this ministry? They do. Stephen, Jeanette, Glenn, do you believe that God is calling you to this ministry. I now invite the Archdeacon to confirm that the ordinance have taken the necessary oaths and made the declaration of assent. They have duly taken the oath of allegiance to the Sovereign and the oath of canonical obedience to the Bishop. They have affirmed and declared their belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. Thank you. Friends, let us pray for those being ordained and for the ministry of the whole people of God. God our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son, you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, each may be an instrument of your love, and give to your servants, Stephen, Jeanette, Glenn, now to be ordained, the needful gifts of grace, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's be seated for the word of God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you, that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, 
so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. One of the last things Jesus does with and for his disciples is to share a meal with them. The meal will have resonance for his church for every generation until the kingdom comes. In the meal, which John's gospel preempts the Passover, I'm going to do a bit of theology here, though uh, our ordinance will be familiar with this, so I'm trusting I'm not telling you anything you don't know. You all know uh, that in the um, synoptic gospels, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, 
The meal is placed within the context of the Passover. It's a Passover supper, isn't it? But in John's Gospel, it's the night before. And the reason for this, you need to get inside John's theology, because John is presenting Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And we hear this right at the beginning, don't we? When John the Baptist identifies the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John, the Gospel writer, is revealing a profound truth to us as he does throughout all of his Gospel. The disciples will have already had some glimpse into the fact that Jesus is the Logos. He was with the Father at the beginning. Trying to get your head around this is an incredibly difficult piece of theology, isn't it? And they were struggling, which is why we hear the disciples say, who are you, Lord? It's like Jesus was doing their head in. People don't walk on water. Who are you, Lord? People don't still the storm. People don't break bread and fill uh, and feed several thousand people. Who are you, Lord? Who are you? And even now in this last, at this last meal, there are questions. Who are you, Lord? He is the Logos, with the Father at the very beginning. He and the Father are one, he tells us. He is the birther and rebirther of creation. His was the voice that spoke to Moses in the burning bush. He's the living water, the light of the world. He is the bread of life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He showed his followers at every festival. You can map John's gospel and do it. You can map his, the journey from one festival to another. And each time, the gospel writer is showing that Jesus is actually the fulfillment. It's like at Christmas. Today we're hearing so much of, are we going to cancel Christmas? And we're left a little bit aghast. How do you cancel a remembrance of the Incarnation? It's more than tinsel and glitter, and you know this. He is the fulfillment of every sacrament, of every, every religious festival uh, that was given to the Jews. He is the fulfillment of them. He's at the heart of them. He gives them their truest meaning. And at this last meal, with those who are his servant, yet whom he calls friends, he's revealing himself as the true Passover lamb, by whose blood the angel of death passes over. He is Israel's deliverer. He is our God. And friends, the day will come when at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth. And I would encourage us to bow our knee in this world. Because the day will come when all, all will bow their knee before Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the way, the truth, and the life. At his last meal, and we, we picked this up from Sue's reading, the air is heavy, it's somber. There's a solemnity, it's foreboding. Within just a few hours, he will be dead. And the people in the room will be the people he has appointed to go and tell the world that the Messiah has come and the Messiah is God himself. It's a big message. These are the same people who after his resurrection and just before the ascension, Jesus will say to them, go and make disciples of all people and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's called the Great Commission, isn't it? 
as deacons you will be baptizing. Never, never lose the heart to baptize. And friends, don't just wait for people to come to you. Jesus sends, go out and make disciples. I want to hear your stories as you grow in the ministry you're called to. Tell me and inspire me with the work that you're doing and our colleagues. We want to hear. Observing guidelines. But go and make disciples and bring people to baptism. Remember, these people, these servants, these friends, are the same people who were jockeying for positions of leadership. Do you remember? Let me sit at your right and your left. And when the others got to know about it, don't you just desire to know who let the cat out of the bag? Initially, it was a quiet conversation uh, with them and Jesus, and somehow all the rest of the disciples got to hear about it. They're all jockeying for position. They all want to be at the right and the left, or they all want to be holding that place of authority and leadership. And Jesus shows them, through a most dramatic act, the kind of leadership they must embrace. They are to stoop into the dust and wash the feet of others. That's quite, quite something on any role description, isn't it? That's what you're called to do, to stoop into the dust, to wash the feet of others. Friends, can you imagine Jesus, the author of life, kneeling before you to wash your feet here and now? What would you say to him? What would you do? Because he is effectively in this ordination washing your feet. And I'm sorry that because of the way we do things at the moment, we cannot have foot washing in this service. And what of being the foot washer? My dear friends, never be so proud or so ambitious to turn from this and never underestimate the grace and power of God in you, in your humble service. Have you noticed how when people show humility before you, have you noticed how it humbles you? Have you noticed how it touches you very deeply? especially in moments when we're feeling particularly proud or indignant and the other humbles themselves before you. A year or so ago, Pope Francis convened a meeting with the leaders and warring parties of South Sudan. Archbishop Justin was present. The meeting was deemed miraculous that the Archbishop and the Pope could actually convene this meeting, bringing these warring leaders together in the same room. We're told by the only reporter who was present that the Pope delivered some remarks. And then he got up and concentrating his eyes on the President and Vice President, the Pope said, as a brother, I ask you, to remain in peace. I ask you from my heart. He was pleading with them to cease fighting, to stop the bloodshed of the past five years where over 400,000 civilians had lost their lives. That's not to speak of the homelessness, the injuries, the devastation, the bereavement. Then without saying any more, the 82-year-old Pope walked over to President Kia and with the help of an aide, he knelt down and kissed his feet. 
Kier's facial expression conveyed shock and humility. And when the Pope moved on to Vice President Mashar, the Vice President tried to stop him. And the Pope said, allow me, let me. He then moved on to Rebecca Garang. And as he knelt in front of her, tears flowed down her cheek. And there were many others in the room who wept, including a hardened journalist. The gesture was dramatic. The symbolism was not lost. Hope was kindled in that very moment. You know, it was this gesture that triggered Steve Bannon. Do you remember Steve Bannon, the architect of President Trump's presidential campaign, to describe the Pope as the enemy to Italy's populist leader? And here's the thing, Mr. Bannon spoke the truth. Populist politics and Christianity are incompatible. Populism is founded upon appealing to the masses and finding a common enemy. Instilling fear against the common enemy, especially against the most vulnerable. Minorities, immigrants and the poor. It claims to be the true voice of the people and its political present uh, pre and the politicians present themselves as savior type figures. Truth is a sound bite and it changes on a whim and for some it's very appealing. We're seeing a rise in populist politics across the world. We're seeing it played out daily in our own political arena, see it for what it is. The coronavirus pandemic and the economic implications of Brexit bring immense challenges of their own, as you know. The populist political backdrop exacerbates and divides. As deacons, you are called to be counter-cultural not to collude with this kind of rhetoric, but to model something very different. For you will tell the good news of Christ's saving grace. Who, if not you, will come alongside the lost, the broken, the despised, the person without hope or meaning or self-worth, the person who has been spun a myth and has left Jesus behind with the Tooth Fairy and Father Christmas. God needs leaders with a servant heart that will break stubborn minds and arrogant hearts by acts of humility, by merciful tenderness and loving kindness. These are extraordinary weapons in the armory of God. God needs the servant-hearted who will listen attentively and who will look deeply and who will notice. Friends, not to network, not to self, for self-gain, but in order to see, in order to come alongside, and in order to enable people to encounter Jesus, the resurrection. As deacons in the Church of God, you, like the Pope and the Archbishop and others, will find your way of speaking truth to power and speaking against injustice. Yoke yourself to Christ. The servant-hearted might not always roll up their loincloth, and I would caution against it. But they will roll up their sleeves in order to make a bigger difference with more people knowing Jesus and more justice in the world. My prayer over you is also my prophecy, that as your servant heart is enlarged with the love of Christ, you will grow in confident humility as you to grow, continue to grow in his likeness. 
Friends, thank you for your yes to Jesus. Thank you that by your yes, Christ can do immeasurable things in you and through you. And thank you that because of your yes, the kingdom of God draws ever nearer. Always guard your heart and God bless you in your calling and vocation. Amen. stand. Glenn, Jeanette, Stephen, you are ready and the time comes. Deacons are called to work with the bishop and the priests with whom they serve as heralds of Christ's kingdom. They are to proclaim the gospel in word and deed as agents of God's purposes of love. They are to serve the community in which they are set, bringing to the church the needs and hopes of all the people. They are to work with their fellow members in searching out the poor and weak, the sick and lonely, and those who are oppressed and powerless, reaching into the forgotten corners of the world that the love of God may be made visible. Deacons share in the pastoral ministry of the church and in leading God's people in worship. They preach the word and bring the needs of the world before the church in intercession. They accompany those searching for faith and bring them to baptism. They assist in, the administering, in administering the sacraments. They distribute communion and minister to the sick and the housebound. Deacons are to seek nourishment from the scriptures. They are to study them with God's people, that the whole church may be equipped to live out the gospel in the world. They are to be faithful in prayer, expectant and watchful for the signs of God's presence as he reveals the kingdom among us. We trust that you are fully determined by the grace of God to give yourself wholly to this service, that you may draw his people into that new life which God has prepared for those who love him. And now, in order that we may know your mind and purpose, you must make the declarations we put to you. Stephen, Jeanette, Glenn, do you accept the Holy Scriptures as revealing all things necessary for eternal salvation th through faith in Jesus Christ? I do. 
Will you be diligent in prayer, in reading Holy Scripture, and in all studies that will deepen your faith and fit you to bear witness to the truth of the gospel? Do you believe the doctrine of the Christian faith as the Church of England has received it? And in your ministry, will you expound and teach it? Will you strive to make the love of Christ known through word and example and have a particular care for those in need? By the help of God, I will. Will you be a faithful servant in the household of God after the example of Christ who came not to be served but to serve? Will you endeavor to fashion your own life and that of your household according to the way of Christ, that you may be a pattern and example to Christ's people? By the help of God, I Will you work with your fellow servants in the gospel for the sake of the kingdom of God? By the help of God, I will. Will you accept the discipline of this church? and give due respect to those in authority. By the help of God, I will. Will you then, in the strength of the Holy Spirit, continually stir up the gift of God that is in you to grow in holiness and grace? By the help of God, I will. Sisters and brothers, would you please stand? You have heard how great is the charge that these ordinances are ready to undertake. And you have heard their declarations. Is it now your will that they should be ordained? It is. Will you continually pray for them? We will. Will you uphold and encourage them in their ministry? Stephen, Jeanette, and Glenn, in the name of our Lord, we bid you remember the greatness of the trust in which you are now to share. The ministry of Christ himself, who for our sake took the form of a servant. Remember always, that with, thank remember always with thanksgiving that the people among whom you will minister are made in God's image and likeness. In serving them, you are serving Christ himself, before whom you will be called to account. You cannot bear the weight of this calling in your own strength, but only by the grace and power of God. Pray, therefore, that your heart may be daily enlarged and your understanding of the scriptures enlightened. Pray earnestly for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us sit or kneel to pray. power of the Spirit and in union with Christ. Let us pray to the Father. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all the members of the Church in their vocation and ministry, that they may serve him in truth and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for Paul and Beverly, our bishops, and for all bishops, presbyters, and deacons, that they may hunger for truth and thirst after righteousness. 
Let us pray to the Lord. For those now called to be deacons in his church. Let us pray to the Lord. For the mission of the church that in faithful witness we may proclaim the gospel of reconciliation to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. For the unity of the church, that we may be one in Christ according to his will. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who do not yet believe, that they may receive the light of the gospel, and for those whose faith has grown cold, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick and suffering, for the aged and infirm, for the lonely and neglected, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the poor and the hungry, for the homeless and the oppressed, for all prisoners and captives, and for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for Elizabeth our Queen, for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for ourselves, for grace to repent and amend our lives, that we may be pardoned and absolved from all our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Remembering our sister and friend Louise and all who have gone before us in faith and in communion with all the saints, we commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. We praise and glorify you, Almighty Father, because in your infinite love you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession, a royal priesthood, a universal church. We praise and glorify you because you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to take the form of a slave. He humbled himself for our sake and in obedience accepted death, even death on a cross. We praise and glorify you because in every age you send your spirit to fill those whom you have chosen to equip your holy people for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. And now we give you thanks that you have called these your servants whom we ordain in your name to share as deacons in the ministry of the gospel of Christ who came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for others. Therefore, Father, through Christ our Lord, we pray.
Send down your Holy Spirit upon your servant Stephen for the office and work of a deacon in your church. Send down your Holy Spirit upon your servant Jeanette for the office and work of a deacon in your church. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Glenn for the office and work of a deacon in your church. Through your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, give your servants grace and power to fulfill their ministry. Make them faithful to serve and constant in advancing your gospel in the world. May they follow the example of Jesus Christ, your Son, who washed the feet of his disciples and set the needs of others before his own. May their life be disciplined and holy. Their words declare your love and their actions reveal your glory, that your people may walk with them in the way of truth and be made ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be glory and honor, worship and praise, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would the newest deacons in the Church of England please stand? And would you please take your Bible into your hands, the eternal writ. Receive this book as a sign of the authority given you this day to speak God's word 
to his people. Build them up in his truth and serve them in his name. Amen. Please put your Bibles down. Thank you. And, and turn around and face your people. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus our Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. We welcome you as, as fellow, fellow servants, servants in the, the gospel. gospel. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love. Friends, let's all stand to receive God's peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. and our fellow ministers and the people of God are going to do together with our newest deacons. I said the Church of England. I should really have said the Church of God. The first thing we shall do together is break bread. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks that your Son walked in your way with the gospel of peace. He washed his disciples' feet in love and calls your servants to follow in his footsteps. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of, his, of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ Jesus our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest. This our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by the Holy Spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Bless you, and honor and glory of yours. Amen. Uniting our prayers with disciples across this diocese and throughout the world, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word. Friends, please do be seated. I'm going to administer Holy Communion to my colleagues, to the ordinance, uh, to the new deacons, and then to uh, uh, families and friends. If you um, are going to receive a blessing, would you just make that known uh, to us, to me? Um, I won't be speaking any words over you. I will extend my hand and pour out the riches of God's blessing. The body of Christ broken for us all, the blood of Christ shed for us. Amen.
Holy and blessed God, you have fed us with the body and blood of your Son and filled us with your Holy Spirit. May we honour you, not only with our lips, but in lives dedicated to the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice, to send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Before I give you God's blessing, a um, couple of notices, there are going to be photographs straight after this service, so we're going to be scooping up our new deacons, okay? I just want you to hear how proud I am of you, uh, and my heart rejoices in you. Would you all please stand to receive God's blessing? Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God who has called you is faithful. May the Lord whose glory fills the heavens cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. May Christ who has ascended to the heights pour upon you the riches of his grace. May the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in your ministry. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you, upon those you love, and for whom you pray, this day and forever. Amen. In the name of Christ. Amen.